$4,077 silver? What the? What's up, YouTube? Silver Dragons here, and wow, what an insane number, right? Over $4,000 for one ounce of silver. We're going to talk about that, but first, thank you so much for watching my video. I sincerely appreciate it. If you want to learn more about investing in precious metals, or if you just want to watch awesome videos about gold and silver, make sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel. All right, so over $4,000 for one ounce of silver. That seems pretty outrageous. So what we're going to do is go over to the website usdebtclock.org. I'm going to show you some of the other numbers on this website, talk about what they mean, and then we'll get to silver and talk about what exactly they're referring to when they say $4,077 for one ounce, okay? All right, so here we are, usdebtclock.org. Org. This is the app version, not the desktop version. I think it's just a little bit easier to see. But on the top left, we have U.S. national debt, $26.7 trillion. That is an astounding number. And we're about to add another million. Should we wait? And there we go. Added another million to the U.S. national debt. <laughs> so uh, pretty crazy. Uh, just to the right of that, you have debt per citizen over $80,000. And to the right of that, debt per taxpayer, $214,000. Now, uh, I've got three kids. They're not taxpayers. So uh, I guess you can sort of figure out how that works. Now, going back to the $26.7 trillion, this is quite a large number because just at the start of 2020, it was only $23 trillion. So clearly, we've increased the national debt by quite a bit. And obviously, this whole COVID uh, panic thing has had a lot to do with that. Uh, but I still feel like it's getting out of control. Now, if you think that number is high, this website actually does projections into the future. So let's look at 2028, boom, $79.6 trillion, okay, and then debt per citizen, uh, 222000 which it was 80 in the last one, so if these predictions are correct, I mean, wow, we're going to be increasing the money supply by quite a bit, increasing the debt by quite a bit, and uh, this is definitely very bullish for gold and silver. Uh, usually when the dollar gets weaker, gold and silver get stronger. So obviously this would weaken the dollar if we add this much debt in the next eight years. You know, I, I don't know how they're getting this prediction. I don't know what they're going off of, but I think this is definitely very possible based on how everything is going so far. Now I want to show you something else crazy, uh, not the trade deficit. Scroll past that topic for another video. Uh, here we go. On the top right, you can see median income now. $34,000, okay? And you might think that's pretty good. You might think that's terrible. But below that, it shows the median income for the year 2000, $30,000. So we're making, what, 10% uh, more now? But if you go to the left of that, right in the middle, in the top, median new home now, $322,000. So it's doubled right? Housing has literally doubled since 2000, but we've only got a 10% raise. So uh, yeah, clearly the money isn't doing so good. Uh, the cost of everything is going up, but we're not making more money. Uh, and then there's, uh, you know, the car down there in the corner. Uh, there is one other thing I want to show you in regard to this. All right, so scroll down and you can see da, 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 right here, uh, top left, College tuition now, $24,000. College tuition in 2000, $11,000. So over doubled. And then healthcare costs now, 11000 In 2000, it was uh, 5000 So that's basically doubled as well. So as you can see, clearly the price of stuff is going up. Now in the year 2000, let's say uh, you foresaw this becoming an issue and you decided to put your money into precious metals. Well, at that time, silver was $5 an ounce and gold, $280 an ounce. So either one of those that you would have picked, you'd be doing uh, pretty good. You didn't just double your money. You've done much better than that. Uh, with silver, you're looking at five times. With gold, 
Uh, you're looking at ooh, public math here. I don't know, eight times your money. Uh, so yeah, clearly if you put your money into precious metals in 2000, you would have been doing well. Now let's look at the money creation. Uh, we got U.S. central bank assets, U.S. M2 money supply, U.S. monetary base, and currency and credit derivatives. Now, I like how they put now after all those. Um, so yeah, if you want to pull out your gold and silver and then pull up this page, on your computer you can watch all of this money be created and you can just see the price of your precious metals going up right so obviously the us dollar getting weaker precious metals going up in price now this doesn't always happen simultaneously sometimes one lags etc cetera, etc cetera. but it's no doubt that right now the united states of america is creating currency at a faster rate than they ever have before so this is very good for precious metals uh so okay i think we've had enough of that let's look at uh dollar to silver ratio now so this is the four thousand and seventy seven dollars per ounce of silver okay the the big number at the start of the video what everyone was wondering what does this number actually mean so first of all this is literally the dollar to silver ratio so it's how many dollars are in existence per ounce of silver right now and i believe this is every year so i don't know if you know next year it's going to reset or what it does but right now currently there's four thousand and seventy seven dollars this is us dollars in existence for every ounce of silver so this is quite a large number if we go back to 1913 right below that you can see two dollars and 64 cents in existence for every ounce of silver so this is not exactly saying that silver should be this price um, if you go back to 1913 with the whole two dollars 64 cents uh, per ounce thing you know silver wasn't even two dollars back in in uh, 1913 I think it was like uh, 60 cents an ounce or something like that um, so yeah even then it, it didn't work that way but bring it back to now with the four thousand this is a, a large number, especially because at the start of the year, this number right here was only a thousand. So there was a thousand dollars in existence for every ounce of silver. And now it's over 4,000. So in, in just nine months. So clearly, this is just another way you can look and see, yeah, the money supply is expanding dramatically. And also another thing you could think about is, okay, maybe not a lot of silver is being mined this year or something like that because of COVID. And so that's why the number is so high. But this is the highest I've ever seen this number. And I think with the continued expansion of the money supply, we're going to see the number continue to climb higher. Now, will silver ever get to $4,000 an ounce? Well, I don't personally think so. If it did, that would literally be like a hyperinflation situation, right? Where the U.S. government is losing control of the currency. They're creating just insane amounts every day. Uh, it would be something like uh, where we saw in Venezuela. They were creating so much currency that literally the value of the, I think it was the Bolivar, was like cut in half day over day. So can you imagine having like, let's say you got paid from your job and, and there their, their currency was crazy so we'll say it was like 10 billion uh, bolivar they got paid and then the next day it's only worth half of what it was worth the day before so literally when you get money you'd have to spend it instantly so that's what hyperinflation looks like it's scary um, clearly that would be eventually the end of the currency and then there'd be some new currency or something like that so you know will we ever see four thousand dollars for an ounce of silver uh, yeah, maybe, but it will be very scary times if we do. Uh, so let's go below that to paper to silver ratio now, because this is a very interesting number. Uh, 179.39 to 1. What does that mean? Well, this is all of the paper silver uh, that's being traded. So like ETFs, I don't know if futures are included. Um, I I'm assuming they would be because that's basically paper silver. Uh, so just think about that for a second almost 180 ounces of paper silver so this isn't real silver this is just a paper or, or a number on a computer screen to one ounce of real silver 
So with the Comex at a place where they might not be able to actually deliver the silver if people are asking for delivery, if they do default here in the near future, well, that would be very catastrophic. I think we would see the price of silver shoot up dramatically if that happens. I mean, people have speculated that it will happen this year because so many different uh, organizations are requesting physical delivery of the silver so if the comex doesn't have enough silver they're going to have to default and clearly with 180 ounces of paper silver being traded there's not enough silver to cover that there's only one ounce to cover all of that so real quick i do want to talk about gold because we're here so we got the dollar to gold ratio over on the left that's almost at 31,000 now so 31,000 dollars us dollars in existence for every ounce of gold uh and then the dollar to gold ratio back at 1913 uh 29 so i think gold was like 18 or 20 dollars an ounce back in 1913 so even then you know there's more dollars in existence than gold that was in existence uh but yeah now clearly there's way more dollars around than gold and if you look at just the ratio uh, right, so the thirty-one thousand for gold and the four thousand for silver. It's it's about nine to one, right? And that's that's basically what silver's mined at compared to gold. So we can see that here. It's uh, pretty easy to understand. Um, and the last thing I wanted to bring up was uh, 1913. Why did they pick that date as sort of the starting point uh, for this? And that's because, well, that's when the Fed was created. On December 23rd, 1913, uh, Woodrow Wilson signed the Federal Reserve Act into law. So Woodrow Wilson, the 28th president of the United States, member of the Democratic Party, he decided to create the Fed. And ever since then, we've been debasing the the U.S. dollar. It's getting weaker. So that's sort of why they picked 1913 as the starting point. And, and clearly now there's a lot more dollars in existence than there used to be. But also I think it's important to note that we're creating money faster than we've ever created it before. All right, so there you have it. That's the $4,000 silver. That's what that number means, right? It's just how many dollars in existence compared to how many ounces of silver in existence. Uh, but yeah, also just crazy to note that at the start of the year, it was only 1000 and now it's at 4000 So that just shows you how much money has been created, how much they're expanding the currency supply. So yeah, this is uh, good news for silver. You know, if you're buying silver now, then I think, yeah, it has quite a bit of potential moving forward. Only $27 an ounce right now, so it's very possible we'll never see silver go under $20 an ounce again, ever. It might just continue to climb from here. Uh, you know, a lot of people have speculated that it can go to uh, new highs, definitely over $50 an ounce and beyond. So we'll have to wait and see uh, how it all plays out. But I think silver is a very good buy. Now, if you want to invest in silver, I actually made a video talking about the four different ways you can do that. So I'll put a link up in the corner as well as a link down below in the description. Definitely go check out that video if you're considering investing in silver. There's a lot of really good information in that one. I do talk a lot about investing in the paper silver, which I mentioned, you know, it is uh, 180 basically ounces of, of fake silver, or paper silver to every one ounce. So definitely be careful if you're doing that. Uh, you're probably never going to be able to get physical silver out of those paper trades. But uh, you know what? You can always just buy physical silver and then you have physical silver <laughs> in your possession. So I think that's the best way to invest in silver. Uh, I prefer to call it stacking silver, right? Because I'm buying it for the long haul. I'm not just buying it to sell in a few years. Now, I personally think that with the U.S. national debt going up to almost $80 trillion in the next eight years, uh, yeah, the U.S. dollar is going to get weaker. So I'm definitely in it for the long haul. You know, are we actually going to see those numbers? I don't know, but I'm definitely going to uh, keep on paying attention to it, see how it all plays out. I do want to say a massive thank you so much for watching my video, and I'll see you all in the next one. Silver Dragons, out.